Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for the privilege that we have of gathering under this roof this afternoon, again, to hear the Word of God and to see the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're under great anticipations, Father, and we pray that You'll receive us this afternoon and respect our efforts that we put forth to come to worship You. Bless every soul that's here. We realize that good things are those that's hard to get. So we pray that because of their sacrifice, there won't be anyone left out but what will be healed this afternoon. Save the lost and get glory to yourself. We ask in Jesus Christ's name, amen. Uh, you be seated. Our tin roof kind of makes it hard <laughs> for you to hear it. We won't take but just a little bit to speak to you. And then... Um, We'll go right on with the prayer line, because that's what we designated this afternoon for, was to pray for the sick. And now, I want to say this, I don't know when I have ever enjoyed uh, being with a group of people any more than I have this group here. You've been really fine. I was telling Brother Johnson a while ago that I don't know when I ever enjoyed a meeting any better. Such a wonderful spirit among you people. And believe, faith. I'd like to stay here about a month so we could really get acquainted with one another. Usually, by the time you get acquainted, then it's time you have to say goodbye and go somewhere. I don't know who this little policeman is out here, standing out there in all that rain, <laughs> bareheaded, trying to direct that traffic. If anybody knows him, thank him personally for me, will you? I tell you, he's done a real good job. I want to thank the man who come in here and cleaned out this place and fixed it for this, so this meeting could be here today. I tell you, the community owes a great tribute to a man of that courage. It'll do that. I owe a great tribute to you for a people that'll come out on a day like this. Most people would stay at home. I, I appreciate your courage. And you're standing here in the midst of all this difficult, sitting under this roof, can hardly hear what's going on but yet determined to stay anyhow. That's, that's the courage. I, I like that. I always think of that song. Must I be carried home to heaven on a flowery bed of ease while others fought to win the prize and sail through bloody seas? Yeah, difficult. I preached sometime not long ago in South Africa where it was raining so hard in the time of the Mazoon until women just sitting everywhere and their hair streaking down. Been sitting there all day in that rain. I never seen such a meeting of healing in my life. My in Mexico not long ago, I remember standing down there preaching when it had been raining like this out in that bull rain there all day and then people was there at 9 o'clock that morning sitting in the rain and a woman with a dead baby in her arms. Oh, the baby had died the night before and that little baby lay stiff in her arms. A fellow give out the prayer cards and then give them all out. There was no more prayer cards. They let me down on a rope back behind the ring to get into the ring like this. And Billy come running to me and said, Daddy, I don't know what I'm going to do. He said, I've got 300 ushers standing there. And how many know Jack Moore? Most all of you know Jack Moore here, I guess. He was with me. And um, there's a little woman out there. He said, has got a baby that's dead. Died uh, this morning. That's about 9 o'clock at night. Died that morning in the doctor's office. And said, she wants that dead baby brought into the line. Said, I haven't got no more cards. And I got the line lined up. Said, I don't know. And it pouring rain just as hard as stand there in it. Cold rain. Looked out there and them little Mexican women, their hair hanging down, just drenched wet under them lights. And you could already see out through it. It's raining so hard. Well, I said, well, he said, I can't hold her. Said, we got, we got 300 ushers. Said, she climbs right over the top of them. And she got this dead baby. I said, well, Brother Moore, why don't you go down and pray for her? And I've been preaching about 10 minutes, I guess, something. And I said, why don't you go pray for her? I said, because she wouldn't know who I am or nobody. There's been several speakers. I said, she don't know who I am. You go pray for the baby and that'll satisfy her. He said, all right, Brother Branham. He started to go off the platform. And there was a rick of old clothes that high, all the way for, oh, maybe 20 or 30 yards. A blind man had received his sight the night before. And so they were really interested. 90% Catholic. So then I started to preach. I said, as I was saying, faith is a sub... I look standing before me and there's a little Mexican baby, a little black face, little gums, no teeth, just shiny, little gums like that. And I thought, that must be that baby. I said, wait a minute, Brother Moore. Tell the little lady to bring the baby here. 
So they opened up the room, no, no prayer card. She wasn't really supposed to get in, but she was persistent. That's, that's what you want. So she brought the baby up. I said, Heavenly Father, of course, they don't interpret the prayer. I said, I don't know whether this is a baby or not. I just seen the little baby. But if it is, it's your respect to that woman making this sacrifice. I laid my hands over on that little blue blanket and that little stiff frame about that long hanging out in the woman's arm. And the baby let out a scream and began kicking the top of screaming as hard as it could. The baby was... Now, the little lady fell down and started hollering, Padre, Padre means father, you know. Had beads in her hand. I said, that's not necessary. And I said to Brother Espinosa, a Pentecostal preacher. Many, I guess, I guess you know him, yeah. Brother Espinosa. I said, now, don't you write that baby was dead. I don't know. The only thing I seen was that there, that vision. I said, you follow a, a runner after that woman and let her go and let the doctor sign a statement to her. And the Christian businessman's voice just recently packed a statement. The doctor gave testimony. The baby died with double pneumonia in his office that morning at a quarter till nine o'clock. And that was ten o'clock that night. The Lord Jesus gave it back its life again because of a sacrifice. Now, that is so true. God in heaven knows that's right. Doctor's certified statement. The statement now is in the hands of the Christian businessman, which Demas Shakarian is the international director. He has a statement signed by the doctor. The baby died with double pneumonia that morning, and at 10 o'clock that night, the baby was made live because of the faith of a mother that was persistent to do it. That's all. Just the same as the little uh, Shunammite woman was persistent to get to Elijah. Just the same as the Greek, the Seraphiopian woman was persistent to get to Jesus. She knew she had a daughter who had epilepsy, though she was not even a Jew. The revival wasn't to her people. And then when he got, she got to him, he said, it's not meat for me to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. Called her a dog. She said, that's truth, Lord. See how the real faith will witness the word to be truth. He said, truth, Lord, but the dogs are willing to eat the scraps on the master's table. He said, for this saying, your child's healed. And she found it the same way because she was persistent. Thank you very much, friends. Lord bless each one. The musician. Sister Hungry here. And all my friends, I see here, many of my friends has come in for this meeting. I've seen today Brother and Sister Evans. I don't know whether they can hear me or not. They're from over in Macon, Georgia. Sister Hungry here and, and all of them from up in Memphis, Tennessee. And Brother Palmer and Sister Palmer and their friends. And Brother Fernell, a minister friend of mine there. I see them just sitting all around here now. A friend, personal friend, Brother JT. Brother here from from over in Georgia also, his friend. And we're certainly thankful to have all of you here and your faith and confidence. Some of them people drive plumb to Jeffersonville, Indiana every Sunday I preach up there. Just come up there. I'll tell you that, the world's not worthy of such people, to my opinion, as me thinking. You people here, we're one great unit of Christ. We believe in Him. And now, it wouldn't be a meeting unless I've taken a few minutes to read the Word and pass a few comments because if you're faithful enough to sit here that long, I want to be loyal enough to that to read the Scripture and pass just a comment or two, and then we'll start the prayer line. Now, I'm going to read today from the Scripture from Mark, the 16th chapter, just for a few moments, to draw from this a context. I'm going to begin at the 14th verse. And after he operated them, appeared until the 11, I said it meet and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. He said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now remember, all the world, this gospel to every creature. Some says it ceased with the apostles. He said here that his last commission to the church was all the world to every creature. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Where? All the world, to every creature. No, there's where he give it to the church. Show me where he took it away. <laughs> All the world, he that believeth shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. They shall lay their hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and set at the right hand of God. And they went forth preaching everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Now, 
I believe that scripture to be the truth. Before I forget it, uh, my son told me a while ago, some little lady and her husband from Arkansas baked me a birthday cake and gave it to me. Many of you have given me cards and things I haven't even had time to get into yet. Thank you very much. God bless you. And I hope you have a... We all spend an eternal birthday over yonder where we'll sit down and I want to... I want a 10,000 years of each one of you just sit down and talk. And we won't have any less time to talk than we did when we began. That's the truth. Now... I thank you for all that you've done. I just for about 10 minutes, or 15 at the most, maybe, if the Lord will eat, to just pass a few comments. I want to say this, that I trust that my feeling leading to come, you pastors feeling led to sponsor me to come, that give me an open door. You people were loyal to come out. And Jesus has not failed but what He's appeared to us each time in the sign of the hour that we're living in. And I trust that His resurrection, everlasting, eternal being and His presence has influenced you to love Him and serve Him more than you ever did in all your life. To purpose in your heart to live true to Him. And live closer, better, I heard a story once that was told me about when they had the slaves here in the South. They used to um, sell them on markets and so forth. Like they did when, in the time of the slaves, they, the Boers brought them in out here at Jamaica Island. And the people over here, they smuggled them in and they bought them for slaves, which is legal in them days. And they'd go by and buy them and they'd find good heavy slaves while they would, they would breed that big heavy slave to a heavy woman that would make a better man. That's the reason they're champions of the world today and things they're fighting. They're just had a bred in like a cattle and so forth. But then we find a buyer one time, a broker came by to buy on a plantation where they had about a hundred slaves. And those slaves were, they were sad. They had to whip them to make them work because they was away from home. They were smuggled away, captured, went into captivity and was smuggled away and they'd have to whip them to make them work because they were discouraged. They're away from home. They'll never see Papa Mama no more. They'll never see their wife or children. It was a sad affair. And this broker one day come by a plantation and said, How many slaves you got? He said, About a hundred. He said, Look them over. And he went out there and he noticed somehow there's all but well, one young fella. They didn't have to whip him. His chest is out. His chin is up. Right on the dock. And so the broker, the buyer, said to the owner, he said, Say, i like to buy that slave. He said, Oh, no. He's not for sale. He said, Well, um, uh, he said, is that slave, is he the boss or the rest of them? He said, no. No, he's not a boss. He said, do you feed him different? He said, no, they all eat out there in the galley together. He's just a slave. He said, what makes him so much different from the others? He said, I wondered a long time myself what made him different. But one day I found out, over in the homeland, where they come from, Africa, his father is the king of the tribe. And yet being an alien, he knows he's the son of a king. And he acts like one. Oh, what are they to do to us? Though we be alienated, though we're in a dark world of unbelief and sorrow and sickness and death, yet let's act like sons and daughters of God. We are the sons and daughters of the King. In order to change our attitude, everything, no matter what the rest of the world is, we must hold up the rights of God. We remember that this is not our home. We are not of this country. We're not of this world. We're born of the Spirit of God which is above Going my wife here not long ago to a grocery store. I seen a strange thing in the summertime in Indiana. A woman had on a dress. You don't wear them no more, you know. And so um, my wife said, I said, well, look at there. One of the women's a Christian. He said, well, all these women, I know some of them here, they sing in the choirs, the churches. She said, why is it, Bill, that they do that? I said, of course, uh, and, and our people doesn't do that. I said, of course, we're of a different nation. She said, we're Americans, aren't we? I said, oh, no. We just camp in here. <laughs> We're not Americans. I said, see, we are from above. The Holy Spirit came down, united our hearts with God, and we profess like Abraham. We're pilgrims and strangers. This is not our home. We're seeking a city whose builder and maker is God, coming from above. Yes, we are sons and daughters of a king. Now, I'm going to bring a little thing that sounds funny, just for a few minutes. 
But I'm going to have a trial, a court trial here. Can you hear me? How far back can you hear me? Raise your hand. Well, fine. Back this way. Can you hear me? Good. I'm talking as loud almost as I can. I'm going to have a court trial. And the case is the Word of God promised versus the world. Now, we're going to set it like a court trial for just a little bit before you come to this prayer line. The Word of God versus the world. Now, the case, the cause for this indictment is a breach of promise that uh, God's promises, they claim that God hasn't kept His promise. The prosecuting attorney in this case is Satan. And he is the world's witness because he is of the world. The defendant in this case is Almighty God. The defense witness of this case is the Holy Ghost. We're going to call him a trial just for a few minutes. The prosecutor's witnesses that he's bringing up to defend his case is Mr. Unbelief, Mr. Skeptic, and Mr. Impatient. We're going to give him a trial. Court is called to order now. The prosecutor calls his witness, Mr. Unbelief. He takes the stand first. Can you still hear me? Say amen. amen. All right, good. I feel a little more relaxed. Now you understand, it's a case against God that Mr. Unbelief and Mr. Skeptic and Mr. Impatient is calling God to a, to a trial because he don't keep his word, they say. All right, the prosecuting attorney in this case, he always represents state. So the prosecuting attorney in this state is Satan himself. And he's, we're calling the trial. All right, they call the first one to the witness stand. That's Mr. Unbeliever. He complains this, that all of God's promised word is not true. Now he's going to be tried for this. Listen close now. Don't miss it. He claims that Mark 16, that I've just read was ministered to him in a so-called Holy Ghost meeting where others claimed to be getting healed. And that was ministered to him two years ago, and there's no difference in him yet. That these signs does not follow the believer. He said, he made this claim against it. All right. He sits down. We call the next witness. That's Mr. Skeptic. He takes the scripture of God's Word of James 5.14. And he said he was in a place where they claimed that the elders was called and he was anointed with oil and prayed over. And that was over a month ago and there's been no change in him yet. So he knows that that's wrong. He's calling God and indicting God for it. The next witness is Mr. Impatient. He's an awful guy. All right, Mr. Impatient. He claims that he read out of God's Word in Mark 11, 22 and 23. That when if you prayed, if you believe that what you prayed for, you received, you should have what you asked for. And he said that he asked to lay down his crutches after he read the word and asked God to heal him. And he asked to lay down his crutches and that's been five years ago. And he's never been able to lay them down since. So they, so they claim God is not justified in putting such racial promises in his word. Now, do you understand the case now against God? He's not justified in doing that. Placing such scriptures as Mark 11, 23, 22 and 23, and Mark 16, James 5, 14, and such promises as that, they're indicting God because of a breach of promise that he has broken his promise and is not able to stand by it. And they're indicting him for putting such in his word, for his believing children are not uh, identified by the claims, and it causes them to be persecuted because they are not, uh, God doesn't identify his word after he's made the promise. Oh, we got a real case here now. I look at how they can testify. Yet, here the witnesses stand up again and say, Yet, we are believers. They claim to be believers themselves. And it said, These signs shall follow them at least. The prayer of faith shall say to sick. If you say to this mountain, Be moved and don't doubt in your heart, it shall happen. And we are believers. And yet again, one stands up and says, Yet he that is God promised all things are possible to the believers. What an indictment against God and His Word. Yet again, 
He claims to be alive after he was crucified. And claims in his scripture on Hebrews 13, 8, that he's just as much God today as he was yesterday and will be forever. It's thankful to the same God. And they are dying for that. Because it isn't so. They can't make it act right. All right. Also, he claims, this is a complainant now, he claims that both heaven and earth will fail, but his word will never fail. That's supposed to be believers talking. Now, what an accusation, what a complaint we have against God that he's made these statements and not big enough to stand behind them. What do you think of that? And Satan, the prosecutor, sitting there representing the world to claim these a breach of promise to God because these people has come and has been in these meetings and, and accepted these things that God said was right and yet there's been nothing happened to them. Now, now let's let the prosecutor's witnesses step down just for a minute. You know, we've got another side. Now we will call the defense witness, the defense witness of the defendant, that's God. The defense witness for God is the Holy Ghost. Bring him to the stand. Let's hear his testimony. Fine. First, he calls the attention to the prosecutor's misinterpretation of the word to the people. Right. For he is the same interpreter that Eve had. He's the same interpreter that Eve had. Oh, surely this or this is all right, but that isn't. See, the same interpreter, the prosecutor is, because he's a devil, the same one that uh, God fortified his children behind his word. And the very first time you step from behind it, you're a target to the devil, but he can't get you as long as you're fortified by the word. Now, a promise is, he said again, I want to call your attention. Says, uh, now this is the defense witness, the Holy Ghost. He said the promise is only to believers not make-believers and skeptics and unbelievers. The promise is only to the believers, hey. not to others. Now, this is, a, the, this is the defense witness. And the defense witness should know because he is the one that quickens it to them. Hey. He knows whether it's true or not. He also wants to call the attention here, being the quicker of the word, he also calls the attention... That the word is a seed. And if the seed falls into the right fertile ground, it'll produce exactly what God said it would do. But it's not fell in the right kinds of ground. So there's not soil enough, faith enough, to make the seed grow. I think as the one who quickens the seed, he ought to know. Don't you think so? Amen. How many believe that? Say amen. amen. He should be the one who knows. He's a real defense witness. All right. The defense witness now is going to call his first witness. Now, I see the prosecutor call his witness, Mr. Unbelief, Mr. Skeptic, and Mr. Impatient. Now the defense witness has a right to call one of his witnesses. The Holy Spirit has a right to call it because he is a defense witness for God's Word. Now, these men claim they believe, but the Holy Spirit knows nothing about it, and he's the only one... Can quicken it just like your body here. See, your body is dead without the Spirit. So is the Word of God dead without the Holy Ghost to quicken it. The Spirit quickens the body, and the Holy Ghost quickens the Word. You get it? Now he ought to know. Now he's going to call the first witness. Let's see who he's going to call. Noah. He's going to call Noah. Noah said. In the days that I live was a scientific age, way smarter than they are in this day. And the Lord God told me there was going to come rain down from heaven. It had never rained, you remember, up on the earth. And they could take instruments and prove there was no rain up there. Remember, it never rained in them days. God watered the earth through irrigation. But he said, it's going to rain and going to destroy the world. There's going to come a great flood all over the earth that will cover it over and destroy it. He said, yet I got orders from God to build an ark. I went to work on this ark showing my faith that I believe what God said was the truth 
regardless of what science had to say about it. Amen. I think he makes a good witness, don't you? Amen. No matter what anybody else says about it, God said that it was going to rain, so if there's never been rain up there, he can put rain up there. I'll build the ark anyhow, make it ready for it. Although I had that fellow on the witness stand here a while ago, Mr. Unbeliever, he scoffed at me all along. He made fun of me. And I've seen Mr. Skeptic, he come around and he laughed at me. Mr. Impatience, all of them, they laughed at me for believing in such a miracle. But I waited. When I finished the ark, the rain never come. And I waited for 120 years before it come, but it come. Amen. Sit down. Witness? That's a good testimony. Let's call another. Witness number two. Abraham. Bring him up. We've just been talking about him. Also, he said, I heard the word of God when I was 75 years old. Tell me something that was absolutely against all reasons. It had to be a super time super miracle that I was going to have a wife 65 years old to produce a son to me when she was 65 years old. We went out and got everything ready because God said so. We believed it. And the, I told all of my friends that these things is going to happen. After This had to take place because God said so. I waited patiently. The first month come along, I asked my wife, how was she feeling? No different. All right. I believe God anyhow. There was Mr. Unbeliever, Mr. Scoffer, Mr. Skeptic, and all them standing around. They scoffed and laughed at me, called me Father of Nations when I had no children, and I kept believing every month, every month it would happen. She got older and older all the time, but and 25 years later, God kept His Word true. Amen. It happened. Abraham, that's a good witness. The Word never said when... He said he would. He said, I'll give you a child, son, by Sarah. Not next month. He never said next month. He said he would, not when. They they shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. That's the idea. The prayer of faith shall save the sick and God shall raise him up. Carry him to sin in Jerusalem until you're new with power on high. Not for one day, two hours, ten days, ten years, until the power comes. A real defense witness these fellows are. He never said when we'd have the baby Abraham said, but he said we would have it. And all the time the odds is building up against me, I stayed steady because God. I didn't stagger it, unbelief of the people. Glory. I helped right on. Good, Abraham, sit down. Now, let's have another witness. Number three witness. Let's bring Moses up. See what he says. Now, he said, I was a scientist. I've been 40 years in the wilderness after failing on the job. But one day I met God, and that voice, a pillar of fire back in the wilderness, told me, a scriptural voice, that the hour was at hand that he had heard the cries of his people, remembered his promise, and he was going down to deliver them, and he was sending me for the job. I asked him for a sign. He gave me a sign. And he gave me another sign. Both signs that had voice. He said, then if you won't believe all those signs, just pour water from the ocean up on the ground and it'll turn to blood. That's it. That's all of it. Pharaoh was finished then. He said, if, you, if they won't believe those signs, those voices. And yet, I went down in the line of duty just as God told me to do. Jehovah, the I Am, Amen. told me to go down and do this sign. And I took this sign down before Pastor Pharaoh. Yeah, yeah. And I threw down my rod, and you know what? He tried to make it look shady, yeah. like it's some magic trick. And he got some carnal impersonators to go out and mock it, yeah. do the same thing. But I know it was God's Word, and I'd come to take those children out of there no matter what taking place, I still believe the Word of God, so I held steady with it. Amen. Amen. Moses, you're a real witness. Don't make him here try to cop it and try to make it look like it. He held steady. The magicians come up. See, Pharaoh said, see, it's some cheap trick. It's Beelzebub, some mental telepathy or something. I've got, man, your magicians can do the same thing. Fortune tellers to mock it, whatever it is. That didn't stop Moses. It was the Word of the Lord because it was a scriptural sign following it. Oh, yes, 
us of Mr. Unbelief, Mr. Skeptic, and all them hung around my shoulders, but I stayed right straight to that word, knowing it was God that said the word. It's God to take care of it, not them. He told me I was going to take those children to the promised land. He told me I was going to take them out of there, and I was going to come back to this mountain where it happened. I don't know how Pharaoh threat, threatened my life and everything happened, but I stayed true to the promise. Finally, God overpowered the enemy, and I brought them through the Red Sea as on dry ground. God kept His promise, and I come right straight to the mountain where He told me I would come to. The same mountain. He had believed that it was God, and He held steady. Let's bring witness number four, but we're in a hurry. Let's bring witness number four, Joshua, who succeeded Moses. Joshua said, I went down there with the spies. I was sent out. Twelve of us were sent, one out of every denomination. He said, we went down there. And we looked. And here they come back scared and said, well, we look like grasshoppers upside of them fellows. Oh, my, they're greater than we are. They're mighty men, what all they are. We look like grasshoppers. He said, if Kadesh Barnea, I steal the people. He said, wait a minute. You're looking at a giant in the opposition. I'm looking at the promise of God. God said, I'll give you the land. Amen. I got the people quiet because the word promised it. Then day after day, they come around and say, where's the land? Where's the milk and honey, Joshua? You promised it too. Where's that? God will take care of it. And he let all them unbelievers die. He kept me alive. Raised up another generation. Forty years later, we took the land. God said so. And remember, there's only two days' journey away. He held them back just for 40 years because of their unbelief. Your healing might not be five minutes away. Your unbelief will keep it away from you as long as you live. Got to believe it. He's a real witness. Joshua, yes, sir. They took the land 40 years later. We got so many witnesses we could call. But if you'll excuse me, I'd like to be his next witness. I'd like to put myself up for his witness. But don't sound too personal. I'm his witness. I want to be his next, his fifth witness. How can God take a cucklebird and make a grain of wheat out of it? A sinner come from a sinful family all over the guns and died with their boots on. Bootleggers and whatever more you have. Why, well, I had nothing to do with it. My mother that's in glory today said the hour when I was born, that angel of the Lord come in the window and stood on the cradle. Where was that? They got the picture of it in the scientific halls of the art of religion today. It's worldwide known. God promised to do these things. As a little boy, a boy spoke to me and said, Don't never smoke, chew, or drink, defile your body in any way. There will be a work for you to do when you get older. Scared me, of course. What did I know about religion? My people formerly were Catholic. How did I know anything about these things? I was in the church in my life. They both married out of the church, so they just, mother and father both was Irish, and so they just married out of the church, and we had no religion. We just lived like a bunch of dogs. I was all pulled about like campers from post to post. Wherever we could find a little shack, we could pay the rent over three or four dollars a month. That's the way we lived. A little old barefooted boy packing water to a whiskey still one day when God and His sovereign still keeps His word. Come down in a whirlwind and stood there and said, Don't you do these things? Amen. He said it. When I've become a young man. Visions begin to break over my eyes from a little bitty boy. It scared me. I got saved and I joined the Baptist church. I, asked, I told my Baptist brethren about going in. I didn't know what to call it, a vision. I called it a trance. And I went and said to my brethren about that. They said, Billy, have nothing to do with that. That's the devil. That's the devil. Don't you have nothing to do with that. One night, a little camp where I was fishing way back in the mountains. I was laying back there about 3 o'clock one morning. I seen a light coming. I'd just been reading the Bible. I thought it was somebody coming, shining through a knot hole, a lantern or something. It was way in the wilderness. And I thought, somebody's coming up. The light was on the floor. Spread greater and greater. I heard of somebody walking. When it did, it was a man. He was barefooted. He had hair to his shoulders. He had on a robe. And I like scared me to death. He said, don't fear. I'm sent from the presence of the Lord God to tell you it's your peculiar life. Don't try to get from these things. That is your calling. 
God will be sending you to different places all over the world to pray for the sick. And if you get the people to believe and be sincere, nothing will stand before the prayer. Hallelujah. It scared me to death. Certainly did. I stood there. And he kept talking. I said, Sir, I'm here because of those trances and things like that. He said, There will be three things happen. First, you'll know by taking your hand to hold the people. Then it will come to pass after that if you're sincere, that you'll know the very secret in their heart. And I said, that's what I'm here to talk about. Was I, the, my brethren told me that that was of the devil. I'm a Christian. I don't want to be nothing of the devil. He said, as it was back there, so is it now. When they were arguing on what kind of buttons they should wear on their coats and things like that. And the minister saying that Paul and them turns the world upside down. What was it? But it was a, a evil spirit that said, these men are servants of God that turn the world upside down. That Paul and them said... The evil spirit testified that they were true servants of God. He told me, he said, don't you remember in the scriptures, that's the thing our Lord did and that's what he promised? He said it would happen again in the last days? Oh, well, what can that be? He said, well, it's the spirit of the Lord Jesus. He is the word. And he's promised this in the last days. Now, don't be afraid. I went down then to baptize a bunch of people on the river. One was baptized and there were about 5,000 people standing on the bank. Right in the middle of the day, two o'clock in the afternoon, hot, hadn't had a rain for a week or two, and standing on the bank, here come that pillar of fire whirling out of the air, coming down where I was standing, and a voice said, as John the Baptist is sent in the forerun, the first coming of Christ, your message will forerun the second coming of Christ. The newspapers tackled and swept into Canada on the Associated Press around the world. A local minister, Baptist minister, baptizing and said a mystic light appears over him. The very one that they caught the picture of here and done it in Germany and everywhere. And it's done. My pastor said to me, he said, Billy, what kind of a dream did you have? Why, you know you didn't see. I said, there were hundreds standing there witnessing it and they kind of said, oh, that's a mental delusion. Try this best. That's old man unbelief and Mr. Skeptic. I held straight to the word. Stay there because I know it was God's promise. And Luke the 17th chapter, he promised as it was in the days of Sodom, as I've seen the world heaping up as it was, I know something has to come to pass. I've seen in Malachi 4, where they would restore back the faith to the word that they scattered out from. I know that had to come to pass, and I stayed true to the word. I find Jesus Christ today the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Congregation, it's raining. I'll stop right here. I want to say this. I've got all these witnesses, my own witness, many of your witnesses this week. That thing is true. The message, how can I? Dr. Davis said to me, a boy, a grammar school education, go to pray for kings and potentates and light a revival that will go around the world. Billy, get next to yourself. But it did it. It did it. 33 years later, the revival over and it did it. God said so. I am his witness. He didn't say when he would do it. He said he would do it. I waited for the time when the word would be so real, put into my hand as it was a sword, and could discern with that the very thoughts of the people's heart. I thought, how can that be? I waited, believing it, and it happened. The scoffer, the unbeliever, the skeptic, the impatient still waits and looks on. But God, after 33 years, has confirmed it. Universal around the world, where papers, magazines, and articles has been wrote throughout the world. Amen. Thank you, you be the judge. Amen. Your mind is a jury. Right. Every jury has to make up its mind. I'm closing the court. Uh-huh. You be the judge. Amen. Your mind is a jury. And your actions from here after this afternoon when we lay hands on the sick That'll spell what your verdict was. The way you act after you're prayed for, that'll tell what your intellectual mind has made up. What the jury of your mind has made up. That'll tell just exactly your action from hereafter. I declare that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I declare there's nothing can stand in His presence. The men and women who will believe it. Do you believe it? Amen. Let us bow our heads. Lord Jesus Christ, just a word from you now. Make the people believe they're sitting here. I wasn't going to do this, Father, but they've been so patiently asking now. Won't you, on my own witness, 
We can read in the Bible the witnesses of those characters, the witness of unbelievers. We see where they've always condemned it, them Pharisee religious people in them days condemned Jesus Christ, but it proved out he was the Son of God. They said, you make yourself God. He was God. He acted like God. He preached like God. He healed like God. He raised from the dead like God. He ascended on high like God. He is God. He's coming, God. We believe it in the midst of all troubles. You're still God. Your witness stands out, Lord. I give witness. Other folk of these other man's witness. Thousands times thousands I could have called to both sides. The skeptic. The unbeliever. And the man that just can't wait long enough. You never said when. You said if they lay their hands on the sick. If they believe they shall recover. No matter what time it is. You never told Abraham when the baby would be born. You never told Moses what day he'd bring the people back to that mountain. You never told Noah what day the rain would fall. You never told him any certain time. Neither did you tell us. You said, if thou canst believe. You say to this mountain, don't doubt in your heart. It shall come to pass. What you said, if you believe it. You said, these signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Lord, I place it right back into people's lap. It's up to them. I prove to them by the Bible, and we all know it, that the atonement's made. He was wounded for our transgressions. With His stripes, we were healed. It's past Him. To shut the skeptic's mouth and the unbeliever that said He didn't raise and try to make it some kind of a historical God in the religion. Lord, I pray that you'll appear again this afternoon among us and prove to this audience that you're here. The one that said the word, the God that we've had on trial, to me you're justified, Lord God, you proved yourself, God. Make yourself so real that every man and woman, these poor people sitting here in this dripping barn here, trying to hear the word. Make it so real to them, Father. Show thyself to be God among us. How the people in all ages has come kind of estranged to people. When they was on the sea that night, and, the, and you come to them, they thought it was spirity. It was, they didn't know what it was. And they cried out. But that voice come back. It's I. The voice of the Scripture speaks this afternoon. That this is the hour. This is the time. Sodom and Gomorrah and all these other things are setting just the way they were supposed to be setting. And here you are, showing to the royal seed of Abraham that you're alive. And the Son of Man is being revealed in this day of Sodom. Heavenly Father, grant that the people see. And when they come by, that they'll take God's Word just like Abraham did. No matter when the baby, we could call Isaiah on the scene. And Isaiah could have testified. He would have said, the Lord said to me, a virgin shall conceive. If he could rise and talk to us this afternoon, no doubt. But what he'd say, every young Hebrew girl all through my days looked to be conceived by the Holy Spirit. Everyone. But you said it. Had it wrote down. You identified me as your prophet. And my words that I said was backed up by you. My visions were true. And the people believed it for a generation or two. And then it faded out. Yet after 800 years, a virgin conceived. And a baby was born. His name was Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God and Everlasting Father. 800 years later. Oh, Lord God, what's the matter with these people of, of us on this earth today to call ourselves the royal seed of Abraham when he waited 25 years hoping and, and having faith against the impossibles? to see a miracle performed and you did it. How much more can we take your word when you're the same visible God that appeared to Abraham that's appearing here to us in human flesh in the same manner that you did to Abraham. God grant that they'll, everybody will see it this afternoon and prosper. Every time the people pass the suit and get hands are laid up on them, may they go from this building rejoicing and never take it back, but believe like Abraham and all the rest of the patriarchs. You said it would happen, and it will happen if they're faint not. Granted in Jesus' name, amen. amen. I do believe 
I believe. You believe. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that He's raised from the dead. I believe He's more than able to perform any promise that He promised to do. He can keep every word that He ever said. And He'll do it for us here this afternoon if we'll only believe it. Now, he never said, go ye therefore and uh, jerk the people up out of wheelchairs and take the heart cases and do this. He didn't say that. He said, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That is believers. Amen. Now, the Holy Spirit is his defense witness here. He knows whether you believe it or not. Don't just come guessing. That's right. Take that guess and take that hope and take that imaginary and put it on your feet and say, I have faith. I know it's going to be. Amen. Something will happen. What do you think it is to me standing here, friend? What do you think to me? Standing here, like it is now, before audiences, sometimes up to thousands and hundreds of thousands, we make a claim that He's a living, and His Spirit told me that the Word that He'd give me, could God do anything without being able to back it up? Told he would do it. That's the word. And stand here before the audiences where skeptics, unbelievers, and everything else set by the tens of thousands. And yet see him coming on the scene. You believe he's here? All right. Someone close. Not my friends now. If you're, if you're sick, anybody my friends. How many right here in front of me knows that I don't know you? Raise up your hands like this. I can't. Now, there's some in here that does know me. See, along here, they do know me. Not in here. That's right, isn't it, brethren? All you all on this. See, look here. See, they know me. But out in here, you don't know me. How many in this one row here don't know me? Raise up your hand. Is there anybody in these three rows here, right in here, that does know me, knows that I know something about you, and everything? Raise up your hand. Do I know you back there? Do I know you, brother? I don't believe he understood me because I don't know him. He don't know me. You don't know me, do you, sir? You, you, don't, you know me? Do you know that I know what's wrong with you? No. Who are you? He, he don't understand me because I, I don't know the man. Uh, what do, you, do you know that I know what's wrong with you without being spiritually? I just know you as a man and know what's wrong with you? Certainly not. Sure. I would. Since raining, you can't understand. May the Holy Spirit help us now. All right, starting this section then. You believe in here. That one man, I, he, I, I might not even know. The man sitting there, he's got his hand up. See, I don't th- he doesn't know me. I know he doesn't. But he just put, had his hand up anyhow. I won't touch him. Man. See? I be you all. The Lord bless. Somebody pray in here. You believe, every one of you. You believe with all your heart. Man. Here's a little lady. Let me just call one person and start talking. Just talk to somebody. Get, his, get the Holy Spirit moving. The little lady sitting there. You believe me to be God's servant? You little lady sitting right here? You? All right. Two of you nodded your head, or at least had both of you there. All right. The lady here nods your head like this, pink dress on. If Jesus Christ can tell me what's your trouble or something about you, would you believe me to be his prophet? No, it's him. Your trouble's in your back. If that's right, raise up your hand. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Now, you little lady out on the end, you didn't get it because of... Weather was bad. You have colon tr- or heart, uh, colon trouble. It's in your colon. This woman sat next to you has a heart trouble. That's right. You three women raise up your hands. I now I'm a stranger to you. Oh, now do you believe? Yeah. Have faith. That's all you have to do. A little lady sitting out here looking right at me. I don't know you. You're a stranger to me. You, know, you don't know me. Sitting right there with a the little white. Looking right at me. Yes, you. You don't know me. But you're suffering, aren't you? You're kind of a little worried about something. It's a lump that's in your breast. If that's right, raise up your hand. Amen. Oh, you say you've seen a lump. There's no lump shows. Is that right? No lump showing. And I don't know you. Do you believe God can tell me who you are? Would that make you help you some? Would it help the audience? Now, remember, the woman's got her hand up. Put your hand up. I don't know you. God help me. Mrs. Patterson. Amen. you believe by the way, that's your mother-in-law sitting next to you there. You believe she wants to be prayed for. She come for that purpose. 
You believe God can tell me what's the matter with her? Her trouble's in her eyes and her ears. That's right. Raise up your hand. That's right. Oh, hallelujah. He lives. He's still God. There's a lady sitting back there having epilepsy. She has epilepsy and she's got female trouble. And her name is Miss Woods. If that's right, stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. That's right. I've never seen a woman in my life. The devil left you there, sister. Praise be to God. If thou canst believe. Hallelujah. You just believe. Here's a lady sitting right back here. She's very weak. She's sick. She just come from the hospital. She's got uh, she's got stomach trouble. Her name is Miss Kitchens. Stand up and believe with all your heart. Jesus Christ make you well. Never seen her in my life. Mm-hmm. Here's a lady with gallbladder trouble. You believe with all your heart too that God will heal you? Uh, Mrs. Whittaker, you believe with all your heart God will heal you? That's right, stand up on your feet if we're strangers to one another. Do you believe he's here? What is that? That's God's defense witness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, people believe with all your heart. That's God's defense witness. How do you judge him? Do you believe he's right? Do you believe his word's true? He promised all week long, a priest on it and showed it in the Bible, that he'd do this in this day. Do you believe it's the truth? Do you judge? What's your judgment? Do you believe let those who have prayer cards in this side over here stand up in the middle of the aisle. Over here it's got prayer cards on this side over here. Stand up in the middle of the aisle this way. Those on that side who has prayer cards stand up in that aisle this way. Those over against the other side stand up in that aisle. Those that's up in the top there that has prayer cards walk down in front. Those who's in this line here that has prayer cards stand over on that side. Those in this side has prayer cards, stand over in this aisle right here. Those who has prayer cards here, stand over in this aisle. Now, stop right there now. we get the other side just in a minute. Form your line. Come right down. I'm, now, hold still just a minute where you are. Stand just where you are. Just a moment. Look. How many ministers are in here that believes? Real God-fearing man that believes that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever. And his last commission to his church was these signs shall follow them and believe if they lay their hands on the sick they shall recover. How many of you ministers believe that? If you do, come here and stand with me right here while we pray. So that when these people are healed, they'll see it wasn't just Brother Branham. It's you too. Stand right along here. Form a double line right here where the line will pass through. Oh my, what else could God do? I don't know nothing. Look at the ministers coming, the witnesses. Go right down, make your line down this way. Genesis. Huh? That's all right. That's okay. okay. Now, I'm going to have Brother Borders, the manager, to come here to this microphone. And I want him to keep the line in order so as they'll come this way, go back around that way, go back to your seat. See, when you come. Uh, all that can hear me, raise up your hand. Look. Let these, the farthest back, Come in first and come around this way and go around. Then let the next, go right around behind the minister. Sure, as you're prayed for, go right back and take your seat. Then let Billy, he'll morse you right around and tell you how to get in the line. And then as soon as this is over, then we'll have them stand down that way and come this other way. Now, all understands, raise up your hand now. All right, good. Now, Brother Borders will be right here at the microphone to give witness on what you must do. All right. Now, look. The reason I'm doing this is because I want you to understand. I don't know these brothers here. I know two or three of them. They may be Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian. I don't know who they are. No need me saying that. <laughs> now, I want you to know that after I'm gone, most time evangelists come in town and he does everything. See? He does the praying for the sick and everything. See, that's not right. I want to keep out of that picture. I want you to see Jesus. This week I've tried my best to show you that He's here. And if you have faith, just reach up and get Him. You don't need to come in the line. But if you want to follow this scripture, His divine presence, you've touched His garment. Just look what these people standing here a while ago. God in heaven knows I've never seen Him in my life. 
and I'd start right here in a few minutes to faint. How many knows that Jesus, when that happened to him, that woman using God's gift, she got weak. How many knows that virtue went out of him was his strength? And I'm a sinner. But Jesus said, more than this shall you do, for I go to my Father. Now, we're going to offer prayer. And I want these ministers with me, I'm going to stand right here too, lay hands on every one of the sick. And now, if you remember, listen, hear ye to it. Believe it, unless you come through believing, right now it's settled forever. Don't come. It'll only make you worse. It'll hinder your faith. But if you believe that you're in the presence of Jesus Christ and not we His servants, and we're only carrying out witnesses as we lay our hands on you that we believe this to be the truth. And when we lay hands on you, you believe it. And go out of here rejoicing and saying, Thank you, Lord, it's all settled. Don't you never change your mind. Now remember, let me quote this again. Listen close. Your mind is your jury on this case. And your actions from here out will be will pronounce what your judgment is. You come in here and say, Well, I don't know. You see, you see where you judged him. He's on trial to each one of you. He's here in your presence. His word is here. He vindicates his word. You're here. He, he's on trial to you. Not on trial to me. I believe him. He's on trial to you. If you believe him, if you judge him faithful to his word, now they're just about to get the line straightened out so they're forming around. You see, just, I'm just waiting. So he got it straightened out. Just move that on out and form your long line. Go right straight back the way you come when you get out. If you believe him, then something's going to happen. Amen. Remember, now, there is no power in none of these ministers. There's no power in me. There's no power in any man to heal, but we have authority from God to do this. Amen. We don't have power. We have authority. Here is our authority, God's Word. And the presence of Jesus Christ proves that He's here. Amen. What? You should be healed, everyone. Now let's all bow our heads while we offer one prayer and Brother Borders will be standing here leading the songs and directing the people. Well, as you come through now, pray and believe. All together, brother ministers, you see why I've done this. That when I leave, your congregation knows too. These people get healed. You're God's servant also. It just ain't one. God won't just have one servant. He has thousands of them. All that will believe it. Now let's bow our heads. You have just as much right to pray for the sick as me, Roberts, or anybody else. Heavenly Father, I thank you again. In my heart, and I know hearts here, you are justified to put this in the Word, for we've seen it work and we know it's the truth. And we know it'll work on every person. And we are praying to you now, Lord, conditioning our own soul. While we know you're here, you've answered, you spoke your Word out to us, you're here. Now, may you anoint us, Lord, and when we lay our hands upon these sick people, four sick people sitting here in this rain this afternoon. May every one of them recover and go home and be well. May they be like Abraham called those saints which were not as though they were because God made the promise. And you was the one said, if they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. You never said they'd recover right then, but you said they would do it. And we believe it, Lord. Help every everybody to believe it, Lord, as we commit the meeting to your hands. In Jesus Christ's name, we follow your commandments. Amen. Now let the prayer line start. Brother Borders, take the place. Please. The Lord bless you. The reason I got my hands together with you minister, brothers, that was because some of you all were suffering too, you know. And you put yourself out here to pray for others. Let alone, it's not right. I believe as we call our hands together, I believe that God honored that. And that now, here, here's those who couldn't get to the meeting. Now let's pray for these handkerchiefs. Heavenly Father, we're taught in the Bible that, that they take in from the body of St. Paul. Handkerchiefs and aprons. We're not St. Paul, but you're still Jesus. And we pray, God, that you'll send your blessings to these handkerchiefs and heal each and every one of them. Make them well, Lord, for your glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. And send them. Amen. I want to say this, that coming through the line, I've seen women and men holding babies and they were wet. 
You just remember me, my pastor brothers, that weeks from now, you find out there's a great thing took place here. They will recover. I'll say that 90% of them will recover. That's right. It was, I've never felt such a strong faith. It was really wonderful. I, see, you're, now just act. Go on, act like it was all over. No matter if you didn't feel it. He never did say, did you feel it? He said, did you believe it? Did you believe it? And we believe it. And he's here now. And we give him, we give him praise and glory for all that he's done. And dear Christian friends, I know they'll be closing the meeting in a few minutes. And I want to say this to you. If I don't meet you no more this side of the river, I'll see you there with this same gospel, this same thing. I just remember uh, what you've accepted this afternoon. Your mind has been your jury. It's made up its mind, made up the verdict. Now, you just go on acting. I don't care if you was paralyzed and couldn't move. Just still keep on believing it. He, he said, they shall recover. They shall recover. That's what the witness said. Every witness today... All the way down through the Bible, he, unless he said something spontaneously would happen. But in this case, they shall recover. That's what laying on of hands. Now, if a vision happened and said, this is going to happen at a certain time, a certain time, then he designates a time. But on this case, he said, they shall recover. Amen. Believe it with all your heart. Let's sing one time. Till we Before, let's shake hands with somebody near you. Say, God bless you, Christian friend. Don't move. Just stay. Shake hands around. God bless you, Christian friend. God bless you. 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 Now let's raise your hands to Christ and say, Till we meet. Let's close your eyes and raise our hands now. Until.